Okay, this video is why I quit being a surgeon. And when I say surgeon, I was an interventional radiologist. I did a fellowship in interventional radiology, which is also called imaging guided surgery at uh, Harvard, at Brigham and Women's Hospital with rotations through Massachusetts General Hospital, MGH, Man's Greatest Hospital. Okay, so I initially went into it because I really liked it and I liked the idea of, you know, being involved in medicine on a procedural component as well as an involved imaging. You have to be able to read the CTs, ultrasounds, MRIs, and plane films in order to do these procedures. And it's very social. You know, you show up in the morning, there's a list of cases for the day. I usually I'll make rounds first thing in the morning, write notes on my patients, and then I'll do procedures, I'll teach residents or fellows. All of that stuff is fun. It's very social. There's nurses around, other doctors from other services are coming by, there's technologists around. It's a very pleasant social environment. Um, and there's constantly people calling you and talking to you about different cases and what to do in different situations. So all of that was nice. You meet a lot of people, you make a lot of friends, you get to know lots of people in your hospital, you get a lot of exercise, walking around, making rounds, you're standing up doing cases with lead on when you're working with fluoroscopy. Um, do a lot of CT guided procedures, ultrasound guided procedures. Um, so, and doing procedures is fun. I enjoy it. You know, there's a technical component of doing procedures, you know, tying in a port, all that stuff is pleasant. Um, you get a feeling of satisfaction when you really help a patient. Some of the patients really benefit a lot from these procedures, like when you drain an abdominal abscess that would otherwise have to go to an open surgical uh, procedure where they make a big incision in the belly versus, you know, I could place a large diameter catheter and just drain it with CT guidance, CAT scan guidance. Okay, so that's all good. And I liked all that. I like teaching every day residents and fells, having them walking around on making rounds and, and talking about stuff, talking about cases and all that. All that was good. But why is it that I, what did I not like about uh, interventional radiology, imaging guided surgery? Uh, a lot of things were suboptimal. First of all, I'm like a vacuum. I just suck up new skills and procedures and I would always do a wider variety of procedures than the other docs around me. And they wouldn't want a lot of times to learn those things. And what that means is if you're doing procedures that are potentially gonna be called in on call, then you need everybody in the call pool to do the same stuff. Otherwise, the doc who does the other ones is potentially on call every day. So I found myself often on call every day. My first uh, job. I, w I covered three hospitals and I was on call every single day. So yeah, I made a lot of money. That was nice, but my hours were really bad. I mean, I would not come home at night sometimes from 930 at night and then have to get up early in the morning and go work the next day. So it was incredibly busy. Um, the other thing I don't like about uh, surgical hours, they're unpredictable. You know, if you're part of an established fellowship program, you can turf a lot of the call to the residents and fellows, but it kind of depends on the structure of your practice. And, you know, I was a full scale attending, doing everything I could in interventional, a very wide range of procedures. And it meant I was always on call every day, you know, and sometimes I could get a uh, backup call on some days, but even when I'm on backup call, I would still get called in sometimes. So I could never be, I could never guarantee time for anything, literally anything. And on the one hand, you could weasel a lot of responsibilities. Like, you know, when you're married with a young family, you could weasel a lot of ever having to give the kids a ride anywhere to the activities because you could never guarantee you're not going to get called into the hospital. So that really kind of sucks. Um, but the big thing, too, that bothered me is I knew I could never do anything else. Uh, there I could never guarantee time for anything. I could never guarantee time to, to write a book. I could never guarantee time to devote to a research project. I really didn't like working so much full time. I was a total workaholic and there wasn't any easy escape from it. Because basically, if you're responsible for covering something at a hospital, either you cover it or you don't. And you can try to arrange other people to help cover it, but then they have to hire somebody and that gets complicated. Okay, but there were other things that bothered me more than that. Um, I got forced to do a lot of stupid stuff because what happens is, Patients are dying. Patients are dying all the time. And then the referral service says, oh, the family wants us to do something. The family wants us to do something. And I'm like, well, you know, I would do something if I thought I had something useful to offer that had a chance to help the patient. But I don't want to do a procedure just for the heck of it. Um, and they were like, well, you got to do it. The family expects something. The family feels like we're neglecting the patient. And I'm like, well, that's not a good reason to do stuff for emotional reasons. You know, you do it because you've got a good, you think you got a good chance to help them. You know, everybody, you know, they got a limited amount of time life left on this planet. You don't want to torture them with unnecessary procedures that aren't going to help them. But there's incredible psychological pressure to do those procedures. And I can tell you, 
if an uh, imaging guide or surgeon doesn't do that procedure, all these phone calls get made high, all the way up the hierarchy and they get forced to do the procedure. They really don't have a choice if they want to keep their job. So I did not like that. The other thing is newer procedures were coming in that were going to require the doctor to get some radiation to their brain. Like if you're working on an upper arm dialysis graft doing a declot, it's impossible to not get some radiation to your brain, okay? If you're in a fellowship training program, you can kind of push the fellows in there, okay? And I'm kind of joking there, but what I'm trying to say is you're not going to fully escape it. There's just more of these uh, complex, difficult procedures where you're going to have a hard time keeping your head 100% out of the beam. So if you do a lot of those for years, you're going to eventually end up with some uh, radiation damage to the brain, high risk of that at least, okay? So I didn't like that. I didn't like some of the longer procedures that I thought were kind of fruitless. Uh, I didn't like some of those things. So I, I was kind of moving and I kind of always wanted to be a neuroradiologist. I initially thought about being an endovascular brain surgeon, but uh, neurosurgery's taken that over. So that that's not that easy to do anymore and the, to get cases. Whoever controls the referrals controls the turf and neurosurgery largely controls the turf at most places for that. So I didn't see a great opportunity in that. Um, I sort of also felt that, you know, whenever I would try to do research and innovate, there really weren't options available. In order to really do research and innovate, you have to specifically plan your career so you're going to be able to do it. You have to, there's very, very few places that actually do real research. So you have to make sure you go to one of those places and you'll give be given a lot of time to do it. Most places, they're primarily clinical. Even if they're a university, they're primarily clinical and they don't really make money off of innovation or research, so they don't care about it. You know, regardless of what they say, every hospital says, oh, we're all interested in innovation and research, but there's very few that are going to promote it. So you'd have to be at a place that does. It also would get kind of repetitive. You know, I put in probably somewhere approximately 3,000 pick lines, perfectly inserted central catheters, tons of venous access, I've done easily over 1,000 dialysis catheters. I don't know the number of them. I did so many of them, I would do sometimes five in a day. Okay, um, I've done well over a thousand biopsies. I lost count a long time ago. So stuff like that. A lot of it's pretty repetitive and, you know, it gets a little boring. Um, and just the brain is much more interesting, you know. So the downside of being a neuroradiologist, so the good side of being a neuroradiologist is it's constantly fascinating. I love reading about the brain, studying about the brain, you know, going through all the interesting cases. I, I teach other doctors about the brain. Um, and I enjoy that. I find that fascinating. I think I know as much about the brain as anyone in the whole world, more than perhaps anyone else in the world. So that is very enjoyable. I like being an expert on that. Uh, but it can be a little lonely sometimes and you get you can get uh, hammered in neuroradiology because all the stats come in at the end of the day and you can be very busy. But anyways, that's why, because a lot of people say to me, well, how could you leave interventional radiology? It's in imaging guided surgery. It's so popular. There's so much opportunity. It pays so well. There's all these wonderful, great things about it. And I'm like, you know, it's easy to talk about that when you're a tourist and you're visiting it, but to live that life it's, uh, there's much to be said for it. Um, I think if I could do it all over again, I would have gone straight into neuroradiology. It's, it's much more intellectually satisfying and you, you keep on learning and developing in it. Whereas I felt like I was kind of stagnating in, in imaging guided surgery, even though, yeah, I did like it a lot. I have a lot of good memories from it. Uh, so anyways, for a young person or for anybody just curious about what it's like to be a doctor, I like being in neuroradiology because when I'm not on call, then I'm not on call. I'm totally free. On interventional, I was always on call or backup call like every day. Um, versus with interventional, I'm sorry, with neuroradiology, I know that I'll have such and such a day off and in my mind, I'm like thinking, okay, this weekend, I want to write a chapter on diabetes. This weekend, I want to write a chapter on atherosclerosis. This weekend, I want to make a video summarizing what I know about high fat meal and its effect on blood flow. So I, I have a lot more intellectual thinking and I'm free to do it and I know I can guarantee I have that weekend. If somebody wants to interview me, I know I can guarantee I can do that interview versus in my past life as a, being on call all the time, I couldn't guarantee, you know, five minutes of time. I could be called in, emergency case, got to put in a percutaneous nephrostomy, patient septic with a stone, stuff like that. Biliary sepsis, a lot of emergency cases, IVC filters, etc. So anyways, that's what it's like.